Good evening. It's Monday night, and it's time for CPS News with Brent and Jesse. News that speaks your language. Welcome to CPS News. It's Monday night, July 1st, and July is here, and it's getting steamy out. You feeling it? Yes, it's getting so hot. But let's, let's not forget, we had really nice weather before this. It was very cool and rainy, and I'm actually loving it. Yeah, it's great, and like the town's getting a little less full, and but we've got lots of news bringing it to you. So anytime during this newscast, you know you can leave a comment below. But with that, maybe we should move on to the headlines. Yeah, let's listen to the headlines for tonight. Tonight, CPS Evening News will feature a lineup of informative and exciting stories that our viewers won't want to miss. Stay alert. In an update to last week's story about counterfeit money here in Puerto Vallarta, we are providing you with some tips to spot the fake bills and protect yourself. Baby giant manta rays delight beachgoers in Puerto Vallarta, highlighting the area's rich marine diversity. Dallas Cowboys and Nayarit forge historic partnership. Nayarit named official tourist destination of the NFL franchise. Jalisco entrepreneurs in Riviera Nayarit face alleged repression and property disputes. Get ready to hear these stories, the events going on this week, and much more on CPS News Tonight with Jesse and Brent. In our first story tonight, in a session of the Restricted Establishments Council of the Puerto Vallarta City Council, 86 licenses for the sale and the consumption of alcoholic beverages were approved. 32 of these were modifications due to changes of address or expansion, and 54 were new establishments. It was attended by council members from the three political factions, Green, Morena, and a citizen's movement. Without any issues or discussions, they processed the formalization of more of the al alcohol businesses, many of which had already been operating with provisional permits. It's worth noting that last year, 117 licenses were approved in an irregular session. As stipulated by regulations, representatives from business and neighborhood associations participated without voting rights with the head of the municipal registry and the licensing dictorate acting as a technical secretary. Inter-Mayor Jose Francisco Martinez Hill, upon concluding the meeting, indicated that it was a calm session with some observations, but without generating too much controversy. Thank you to Miguel Gonzalez Guerra for this story. Well, in other news, National Guard personnel in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco are working to prevent crime by patrolling the city and checking for people drinking alcohol in public. I don't want to be mean or anything, but this is not Vegas. They ask the media not to take photos to protect their safety, but we're told that doing their job is essential despite the risks. During a patrol on Politecnico Nacional Avenue, they approached a group of drinking in public but did not give any information as they were not authorized to speak. The officers were seen checking people outside a bar in the area. And well, this story was reported by our own Guadalupe Arsen. Now, Brent gets to talk about a story involving his favorite pro sports team. I assume he would never have guessed he would cover a Dallas Cowboys story from down here in Mexico. Right, Brent? Absolutely, Jesse. This is kind of shocking. So how cool is it that I get to read this story? In a landmark ceremony at the Star, the Dallas Cowboys headquarters, Juan Enrique Suarez de Real Tostada, uh, Secretary of Tourism for Nayarit, formalized a unique partnership with the NFL franchise. This alliance designates Nayarit as the official tourist destination for the Cowboys, marking a significant milestone for the state. Joined by key Cowboys executives, including CFO Tom Walker, Suarez detailed the agreement's terms, which will promote Nayarit internationally during the 24 and 25 season. The Council General of Mexico in Dallas, Francisco de la Torre, also attended, underscoring the strategic importance of this collaboration. This event featured a tour of the Dallas Cowboys offices and the training facilities. Now, I've done that tour. I highly recommend it. It's amazing. Go Cowboys. 
Highly, so future joint activities were discussed in a cultural exchange. Nairi representatives gifted the Cowboys a Wichol crafted football, while, team, uh, while the team presented an official helmet to Nairi's governor, Dr. Mer, uh, Miguel Angel Navarro Quintero. I kind of want to see him in that helmet. Uh, and this partnership aims to boost Nairi's global profile as a premier tourist destination and create new economic and tourism opportunities, solidifying his position in the sports tourism sector. Nayarit is also now poised to attract sports fans with unique experiences that combine the region's natural beauty with a passion for American football. All right, next up is Jesse with a disturbing story about some drama up in Nayarit. Well, drama is a way to describe it, Brent, but the renowned investor Eduardo Valencia Castellano told us a tale of how injustice and violence have rewarded visionary business people. Mr. Valencia Castellanos explains that the Nayarit government has employed various tactics such as repression, persecution, hater, designation, property disposition, and torture against Jalisco businessmen who have contributed to the development of the tourist infrastructure that has given birth to the Rivera Nayarit, resulting in millions of dollars being generated for both the state and the municipality. Eduardo Valencia Castellanos, a real estate tycoon, told his story in an interview, alleging that he was a victim of property confiscation by the government and its office of persecution. Valencia Castellanos recalled that the tourism boom in Bahia de Banderas and the brand Riviera Nayarit was fueled by Jalisco interpreters from Puerto Vallarta. The construction of Nuevo Vallarta, Bucerías, and Punta de Mita increased the value of low-value lands, but also led to a period of authoritarianism as new landowners sought to incriminate the original developers and strip them of their properties. He also highlighted the contributions of key figures like El Patas Aldrete and Jorge Gomez Vasquez to the development of Punta Mita, Nuevo Vallarta, Sayulita, and San Pancho. These efforts led to substantial property tax collections, construction license fees, and well-paid jobs. However, these contributions have been met with imprisonment, murder, and property confiscation by government institutions. Castellanos also cited the Mega Operativo Nuevo Nayarit, initiated by Morena Governor Miguel Angel Navarro Quintero, as part of this oppressive trend. There you have it, important allegations made by Eduardo Valencia Castellanos during the CPS News interview with Israel Torres. Thanks, Israel, for this important information. Now, here's a little bit more on that story that Jesse just covered. Valencia Castellanos attributed these actions to a historical hatred of Nayarit towards Jalisco, noting that before 1917, quite a while ago, Nayarit was a can canton of Jalisco. Despite achieving, achieving prosperity, Nayarit has only declined, living in the shadow of Jalisco investors due to poor administration. In contrast, Jalisco has become one of the most progressive states in Mexico. Puerto Vallarta Jalisco continues to support logistics with the international airport and its hospitals receive Nayarit patients among other service, services. Yet this is repaid with repression, again, according to him. Valencia concluded by warning investors to avoid risking their capital in Riviera and Nayarit and the state due to a lack of investment certainty caused by the authoritarian government environment, again, his words. According to Israel Torres, CPS reporter, Valencia emphasized that investing in Bahia del Banderas is highly inadvisable given the current conditions. Now, I've got a quick message from our sponsor, Hospital Hoya. Are you prioritizing your health and well-being? Well, seize the opportunity to safeguard your wellness at Hospital Hoya, where a comprehensive range of services awaits you, like thorough medical checkups, advanced laboratory and imaging facilities, of course, expert consultations with specialized physicians, round-the-clock emergency care, as well as state-of-the-art intensive care and pediatric units, along with various other amenities. For ver further details or to schedule an appointment, reach out to them at 322-266-1010 or 322-226-8181. Stay updated on promotions and exclusive offers by following their social media profiles as well. Remember, your health and the health of your loved ones is paramount. Hospital Hoya, your trusted partner in health. Now from health, we go to Jesse with some cilantro pricing updates that could affect you unless you're one of those weird people that hate it because you think it tastes like soap. 
Oh yes, in Puerto Vallarta, the prices of essential green vegetables like cilantro and chayote have surged dramatically due to adverse weather conditions. Cilantro, once priced at 60 pesos, has spiked to 240 pesos per bunch before slightly decreasing to 170 pesos, while chayote now costs 130 pesos per kilo compared to its previous price of 30 or 40 pesos. These price hikes are attributed to heavy rains and floods, disrupting harvest, affecting local markets, and prompting businesses to adjust operations to manage costs and avoid waste. No more cilantro in your tacos. Man, cilantro drama, that's pretty bad. All right, so in Puerto Vallarta, the unexpected appearance of three baby giant manta rays amidst beachgoers has sparked widespread fascination on social media. These magnificent creatures typically inhabit deeper waters, but occasionally venture closer to shore in search of food, like Los Arcos. I've seen them down there diving before, pretty cool. Despite their immense size, they are docile and they pose no danger to humans. This event underscored the area's abundant biodiversity and emphasized the importance of respecting the wildlife. Puerto Vallarta remains a sought after destination, celebrated for its diverse marine life that includes dolphins, sea turtles, eels, and many other tropical species, encouraging visitors to appreciate and protect its national treasures. Thank you to Hugo Lin for this story. So that story, pretty interesting. I love the manta rays, but I'll also say because I work with the Amigos de los Arcos and oh, protecting yeah. the Hi, ocean. Guys. And one of them was injured really badly in June. It was hit by a boat. So it just oh. stresses the importance that, we, that you know, we have to be careful out there with the fishing and all that. So That's uh, watch really out. That's really sad. That's yeah. really sad. And you know what else is really sad? The price of cilantro is really Gosh. sad. Be careful out there. You might not get cilantro in your tacos. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. I would too. So let's hope the cilantro price comes down. But now we got to take a quick break. Yes, we're going on a quick one. And then we'll be back with more information in a minute. Back after a quick commercial break. CPS News with Jesse and Brent. They're back. Welcome back and thanks for sticking with CPS News with Jesse and Brendan. Of course, we are the news that speaks your language. Uh, we we got to keep going. We got a lot more news to cover. I hope you're oh, yeah. enjoying the show. Yes, yeah. we have some tourism notes uh, going on. But first, let me tell you, you got to discover Puerto Vallarta and seize an excellent opportunity with Colwell Banker. They offer fractional properties in the charming romantic zone, providing great benefits. The fully furnished units ensure access to the beach, pool, and gym for your enjoyment. With fractional ownership, you receive a legal deed and the right to enjoy the apartment annually, either for your vacations or to generate additional income through rentals. All of this starting from just 300,000 pesos with financing options available. Create unforgettable memories in Puerto Vallarta with Cowell Banker La Costa. Get more details by visiting onebeachstreetpd.com. Next up, Brent's going to give us a brief tourism occupancy update. Puerto Vallarta is enjoying a high hotel occupancy rate of 65 to 70%, which exceeds the national average. Arturo Davalos Peña from the Jalisco State Tourism Secretariat highlighted these positive figures. He noted that despite it not yet being summer or vacation season officially, the city is maintaining strong occupancy both during the weekdays and the weekends. Now looking ahead, he expressed optimism about increased tourism during upcoming vacations and the peak season later in the year. Anticipating a surge in visitors from Canada and of course the United States that are drawn to Puerto Vallarta's favorable climate. Thank you again to Miguel Gonzalez Guerra for this story. Now let's go back to some more political news as Bahia de Banderas president-elect Hector Santana Garcia announced five highly qualified people who along with officials from the 11th city council would manage the handover process. However, it was clear that he did not know the rules in Nayarit's municipal law. The handover should be coordinated by a team of three individuals, no more, including Santana Garcia himself. Furthermore, this team must have designated leader. 
Recommendations from the previous administration suggest that the Secretary of the City Council, the Treasurer and the Municipality's Comptroller should handle these responsibilities. What's notable is that despite claiming to have the best team for the transition, there appears to have been minimal effort to check and follow the official rules. This raises worries about whether they will follow the rules and handle the handover seriously, making people unsure about what will happen next. Thanks, Israel Torres, for the information on this story. So, hey, it's nice to have a good optimistic story about tourism, but you know what else I'm optimistic about? What are you optimistic about, I'm Brent? optimistic that this month is my birthday month. Ah, it July. is your birthday month. It's going to be a great event. There's something cool going on in July. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to that event and to many other events because guess what else is back in July? It's the return. I, we cannot wait. It is the return of Laura's Leisure List. Get ready for what's happening this week with Laura's Leisure List. I'm excited to share this week's awesome events in Vallarta and Bahia de Banderas. Expo Construye y Vivienda, or Build and Live Expo, is coming up on July 17th and 18th at the Puerto Vallarta Convention Center. Enjoy interesting conferences, a networking area, and free admission. Register now at GrupoExprofeso.com. Expo Construye y Vivienda. We look forward to seeing you there. The Vallarta Symphony Orchestra will hold two concerts July 5th at 8 p.m. at the Jaramada Auditorium of the Universidad Tecnología de Bahía de Banderas and July 6th at 7 p.m. at the Juan Luis de Fuentes Lemus Auditorium of the Centro Universitario de la Costa. The repertoire will feature contemporary Mexican composers, including a performance by harpist Christy de la Rosa of the Suite for Jarauca Harp and Orchestra. The program also includes a piece by Diego Jimenez and then zone number two by Maestro Marque. Visit the website on the screen for more information or tribune.travel. Come and visit the Vallarta Botanical Garden. It's low season and on Sundays there will be two for one admission. Don't hesitate. Come and enjoy this beautiful place. And remember July 9th to 13th is Hummingbird Week. The president of Los Mangos Public Library, Yozowski Cortez Gonzalez, announced summer courses for children aged 3 to 12, running from July 15th to August 9th. These courses offer cultural, recreational, and educational activities, including painting, sculpture, yoga, and more. The program emphasizes values like responsibility and environmental care. Special needs children from the EDIN will also participate. The library, now fully air-conditioned, invites parents to enroll their children for an enriching summer experience. What great events happening this July? Now, here's a message from one of our sponsors, Savvy Control Home. Imagine a place where control is at your fingertips. Control the lights with the push of a button. Start your day by brewing coffee and awakening your senses. Relax in the jacuzzi. Manage the curtains, cameras, and alarm system effortlessly. Your favorite music plays in every corner. Experience the perfect temperature year-round. Instantly enjoy home cinema. Transform your home into an oasis of tranquility with Control Home. Discover more on our website today. Savvy Control Home, simply simplified. Time for a sports story, my favorite. Jalisco is leading the Conade 2024 National Games with a remarkable haul of 963 medals. I didn't even know there was that many sports, solidifying its dominance in Mexican sport. Athletes from Puerto Vallarta made a significant contribution with a total of 17 medals, comprising of 12 in the surfing category, one in athletics, and four in the tennis category. This achievement underscores Jalisco's reputation as a national sports powerhouse, highlighting the exceptional talent and the unwavering dedication of its athletes across diverse disciplines. Again, thank you to our sports recorder and coverage from Fernanda Borjorquez. A crucial reminder for all citizens when handling cash, it's essential to stay vigilant. Counterfeit money remains a persistent concern and experts urge everyone to be aware of key security features. When you handle money, it's really important to be careful. Fake money is still a big problem and experts want to make sure you know how to tell real money from fake. Whether you're shopping at or at home, whether you use cash, 
take a good look at it. Real Money has special things like color changing parts, detailed lines glowing under special lights, tiny magnets inside, and even pictures that look 3D. This feature helps stop people from making fake money, but they still try, so it's also up to you to spot this fake bills. Here are some tips to detect the authenticity of bills here in Mexico. Show fake, uh, it's hard to tell, but make sure you touch the surface of the bill and feel it. Does the bill feel a little different in texture? Look at the bill and closely and even hold it up against the lights. Does it look different than the rest of your money? Turn the bill and look for color changing elements on both sides of the bill. Again, compare to your other bills, it's not just about keeping your money safe, it's also about keeping our whole economy safe. Police and banks are always working to stop fake money makers. Each bill you use, it's like a promise that it's real. So stay smart, pay attention, and let's all work together to keep our money safe and our economy strong. Now here's a word from our sponsor to get you looking all pretty. Discover your best self at Glow Up Clinic. At Glow Up Clinic, they offer personalized facial and body treatments designed just for you by a team of experts in aesthetic, medicine, and cosmetology. Your health and beauty are their top priority, so they aim for excellence and harmony in every treatment. As specialists in anti-aging techniques, they're there to help you slow down the signs of aging and enhance your natural beauty. Treat yourself to a glow up, refresh your look, and boost your confidence. The time to shine is now. Well, thanks for that, Jesse. I not, wouldn't mind having some of my beauty enhanced, but we're gonna follow up on a story from about six months ago. So Varda is being promoted in the Czech Republic with a new direct flight from Prague starting in October. The initiative aims to boost bookings for the destination through a charter flight later this year. The Port of Vallarta Tourism Trust and the Guadalajara Convention and Visitors Bureau are conducting joint promotional tours across Europe, including Prague, to the highlight the advantages of both Guadalajara and Puerto Vallarta. Many hotels are participating in this effort across our area. Suhe Cardenas, Director of Public Relations and Promotion at the Port of Vallarta Tourism Trust, emphasized the positive response and the strong interest in this Mexican destination. These efforts aim to establish the flight annually during the same period, promoting both Puerto Vallarta and Guadalajara. They also aim to market circuit products in the region, including encouraging exploration of um, Jalisco's capital, known for mariachi music, tequila, and more. The seminars feature participation from the Tequila Regulatory Council, offering tastings and visits to Dur Touristics Sales Office in Prague shopping centers. Thank you again to who seems to write all of my stories, Miguel Gonzalez Guerra. And on Friday, June 21st, Puerto Vallarta welcomed Mesón Ibérico, a new restaurant in Marina Vallarta, offering authentic Spanish cuisine. The grand opening featured an evening of flavors, wines, flamenco, and a lively atmosphere. Chef Alberto Lareo, known for his work in prestigious Spanish and French restaurants, has crafted a menu that captures the essence of Spanish cuisine, including dishes like Iberian tapas, broken eggs with chistorra sausage, Galician-style octopus, and various paellas. Meson Iberico, with a capacity for 110 guests across 25 tables, provides a cozy, family-friendly ambience, completed by Spanish music and decor. The restaurant is open from Tuesday to Sunday, 1 p.m. to 11 p.m., offering a flexible dining schedule. Their extensive wine list includes selections from Spain, Mexico, and international vineyards, ensuring a perfect pairing with each meal. Located at Avenida Paseo de la Marina 245, local 113 in Marina Vallarta, right next to the lighthouse, Meson Iberico invites food lovers to experience the authentic flavors of Spain. For reservations and more information, call 322 Two three six 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 zero nine, or visit. You can visit mesoniberico.mx. Well, how cool is that? So this mm. restaurant's right here, like right down the road from where we have our studio. Yes, we're neighbors and we're gonna be trying that restaurant soon. Oh, I'm craving it uh, right now. <laughs> super excited about it. it. Sounds like some great dishes and the paella and all mm -hmm. that. But 
last up, we, we just want to thank you all for joining us. Please pre providing comments. If you have any events coming up and you would like us to attend, and we would love to be out there and yes. we would love to come out there and support your local business. Yes, thanks for getting your information from CPS News in your language. I'm Jesse Reese, this is Brent Lane, and we wish you have a great evening. CPS News with Jesse and Brett. Thanks for watching and search us on YouTube.